Okay, number 16, the parson. A holy-minded man of good renown there was, and poor the parson to a town. Yet he was rich in holy thought and work. He also was a learned man, a clerk, who truly knew Christ's gospel and would preach it devoutly to parishioners and teach it, benign and wonderfully diligent and patient when adversity was sent. For so he proved in great adversity. He much disliked extorting tithes or fees. Nay, rather he preferred beyond a doubt giving to poor parishioners round about. From his own goods and Easter offerings he found sufficiency in little things. Wide was his parish with houses far asunder, yet he neglected not in rain or thunder, in sickness or in grief, to pay a call. On the remotest, whether great or small, upon his feet and in his hand a stave. This noble example to his sheep, sheep he gave, first following the word before he taught it, and it was from the gospel he had caught it. This little proverb he would add thereto, that if gold rust, what then will iron do? For if a priest be foul in whom we trust, no wonder what a common man should rust. And shame it is to see, let priests take stock, a soiled shepherd and a snowy flock. The true example of the true example that a priest should give is one of cleanliness how the sheep should live. Um, sorry. He did not set his benefice to hire and leave his sheep encumbered in the mire or run to London to earn easy bread by singing masses for the wealthy dead or find some brotherhood and get enrolled. He stayed at home and watched over his fold so that no wolf should make the sheep miscarry. He was a shepherd and no mercenary. Holy and virtuous he was, but then never contemptuous of sinful men, never disdainful, never too proud or fine, but was discreet in teaching and benign. His business was to show a fair behavior and draw men thus to heaven and their savior, unless indeed a man were obstinate and such, whether of high or low estate, he put to sharp rebuke to say the least. I think there never was a better priest. He sought no pomp or glory in his dealings. No scrupulosity had spiced his feelings. Christ and his twelve apostles and their lore he taught, but followed it himself before. Okay, so let me put back up um, the parson. All right, this is kind of a long one, but it's a good one. So the parson is kind of our dead middle where he is super moral being a parson and super very poor. All right. So he's a holy minded man of good renown. So people like him. He's a good, solid man. He's poor. He's rich in holy thought and work. Okay. He, he, he is the best of a priest that can be. He's a learned man, a clerk. He knew the gospel. He would preach it devoutly to his parishioners. He would teach them. He was patient and diligent, right? If you're following my markings as we go here. Um, and even, you know, he was such a great guy to his, to his flock, his people, that he didn't even like, ex it says here, extorting tithes or fee. A tie is the income you owe to the church. So back then, and even now they're starting to call it more about tithing, where you would owe a percentage no matter what. Like if you made X thousand dollars a year, you would owe 10% or you know, 5% of it to the church by just nature of making money. And he felt bad about collecting the, the taxes, the tithes from his people because he loved them so much. Um, looking at this next, you know, he would give out of his own money to his parishioners if they needed it, like the shirt off his back kind of an idea. Um, he found sufficiency in little things. You know, he was happy. He was like a, like a, just a generally nice, grounded, good, happy man. Um, he did not neglect to pay calls on all of his parishioners. He would roam around. He would check on everybody, even in rain or thunder or sickness or grief. Um, now, this part I have bracketed off is a really great little proverb kind of idea. He talks about being a noble example to his sheep. So the idea here says, this little proverb, what would add thereto, that if gold rust, what then will iron do? So the idea is gold. So if our priests are our gold, right, and we're the iron, right, priests are 
up there as the standard, the the exception, the the like what you should hope to be, or back in that time it was. And we were iron. We were just regular people trying to get through, trying not to sin too much. So it says here, for if a priest be foul in whom we trust, no wonder that a common man should rust. And shame it is to see, let priests take stock, a soiled shepherd and a snowy flock. So it's saying that if a good religious man, you're supposed to be a good religious man, is not good. If he, quote, rusts, if the gold rusts, then what will iron do? So if if my example, my priest is not a good man, then how am I, a regular old Joe, supposed to be a good man if my example, my model, is not a good man? You see what I'm saying? It says here, the true example that a priest should give is one of cleanness, how the sheep should live, right? So this guy, our parson, lives a good, clean, honest, giving, caring, priestly life, giving over his life to his people, his flock. And there, you know, again, we talk about Chaucer having commentary on the religious. So here's the other side of it. You know, before when he said that the prioress, the monk, the friar might not be living their best lives as religious folks, even though they have money, um, they're not really devoted to the religion. Our parson is totally devoted to the religion and he is in it to be a good religious man. So this is a great example. All right, so I need to turn the page. So continuing on, so this is where I was with this mark here. And then it says here, um, 519, 520 and so on, he says, listen, this priest doesn't even go to make money in London. Like priests were able, if they gave good sermons, they could kind of rent themselves out in the bigger cities, give speeches and sermons and get paid for it. He doesn't do that because he thinks, who will watch over my sheep when I'm gone? Who will look after my people? They could go awry. So I need to be here and do my job every day and look after my people all the time. It says here, he was a shepherd, right? Holy and virtuous all-around great leader of men. Um, all he wanted to do was lead his flock to heaven and their savior. Okay, looking at this line here with the star, I think there never was a better priest. Christ and his apostles and their lore he taught and followed it himself before. So trying to give, you know, uh, an example to his people, he 100% gave it all. Good, good man.